and welcome to Mandobug Crafts, episode 34. I'm your host, Mandobug, also known as Amanda. Welcome, new viewers, and thank you for coming back, returning viewers. So, this week, something I've learned. So, my lovely friend Lindsay from the Knitwim Diaries, vidcast, podcast, vlog, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what to call it anymore. I always say podcast, but I feel like I know that incorporates video and audio, but does that mean it has to be on iTunes? I don't know. Whatever. Side rant. <laughs> so Lindsay let me borrow her fleece and fiber source book. This is an amazing resource for anyone who wants to know anything about different breeds of sheep. So, um, Blossom, I have been processing her fleece. This is one of my mother-in-law's newly baby sheep. And it is a North Country Cheviot and BFL mix. So, actually, I wanted to show you the pictures of the fleece. So there's the Cheviot, right? And I kind of, I kind of see that in my fleece. But what I mostly see in my feet, my fleece, my fleece. <laughs> Uh, that sounds kind of gross. Um, is the BFL, and actually her sheep look a lot more like BFL than they do Cheviots. But uh, let me show you this page. Okay, do you see those locks? Now, that's what I have, pretty much. And I thought that that was a characteristic of, like, it being the baby fleece because this was their first shearing, and I don't really know a lot about fleeces. I was wrong. So here's a piece of the fleece. And you can see these individual, very thin, tiny locks. And I thought it was because it was baby hairs. Because, you know, like, I guess I was just thinking, like, how humans, when you're a baby, you have very fine hair, and it kind of matures as you age. I thought that was the case with these sheep. And maybe it is, but that's not why... That's not why the fleece is like this. That's because this is a characteristic of BFL fleece. And I was reading in the source book, it's actually kind of hard to prepare than most because of these individual locks. I've been grouping the locks together and combing them out. But um, you get these really tiny little locks. They're super crimpy. But um, I mean, it makes for a really nice soft wool. I really do like BFL. I'm just surprised how characteristically different BFL fleece is compared to, let's say, the other fleece that I have is a Jacob fleece. And I found that in the book, too. So, here is a picture of a Jacob fleece, and actually, or a Jacob sheep. And I have a picture of the ram that that my fleece came from. His name is Dingo and he's a gorgeous guy. I may insert a picture um, I've shared it on the Ravelry group but his fleece, this hasn't been cleaned yet but his fleece looks like this, like this is a lock uncombed, unflicked and everything. He's got super crimp in him too. I don't know if it'll focus. Okay. Super crimpy um, this piece is kind of dirty. Like I said, I haven't washed it yet. But this is not combed, not flicked, not anything. Nothing. I feel like if you wash this, you could just spin straight with it. I mean, it is very, very crimpy. Um, but a lot less processing than this. Ah, this is very finicky and takes a very long time. But it's totally worth it. So that is what I've learned this week. Moving on to my works in progress. So I've made a little bit of progress on my Albert socks. These are from the Albert Socks book by Stephanie Lan Van der Linden. And all I've done is add this square and this square. So I'm going in and adding squares to like shape these into a shape that can be sewn into a sock. But I've noticed the square is the square D pattern, and it's got issues, and it's wrong. So, like, this square doesn't look so bad, 
but this one is very wonky and I thought it was my gauge but looking back at it when I got down to the inside I had too many stitches on my first needle and I ran out of stitches on my second needle and it wasn't supposed to do that so I'm gonna have to uh, and I remember seeing in the op art group that other people were having issues with this square as well because it tells you to put the stitch marker in the wrong spot but I think there's also issues with the number of stitches I'm not sure I'm gonna have to figure it out so I tentatively put these down because I wasn't feeling like doing math and figuring it out um, it's kind of a shame when you see that printed in a, a book but I'll figure it out um, so I'm also working on um, spinning up some of the fiber from the Rolex for Riches class I took at the Alabama Fiber Festival or it was a tongue twister name but I think it's turning out nicely I love the bright colors I'm shooting for a worsted weight I have no idea how much is on here I'm just gonna pack it till it's full and chain ply it off so um, I know because it's springtime it's been in the mid 80s up to the mid 90s here so I've just been spinning outside all day and it's been amazing to get some sun and to be outside and the birds are all chirping and my dogs are just running around having a good time I think I've spent a lot more time outside than I have inside crafting so um, it's nice that I've learned to spin before this summer because I think I'm going to be doing a lot of spinning this summer it's so nice to sit outside with my wheel so um, You'll probably see a lot of spinning from me for a while. But um, I also started, and this is probably my favorite project right now, um, a Chelsea Market hat. I finished spinning the three and a half ounces that I processed of Blossom's Fleece. So I think I showed you guys the Rolags last week, and I went ahead and spun them up. So I have one ball of chain plied yarn it's about worsted weight and here's the other ball um, these roll legs I, I left some neps in them just to see what would happen so it's not as consistent and it's kind of chunky here and there but th th these roll legs didn't have any neps in them so it's a lot more consistent and nice so I think I learned my lesson about keeping the nets in. I think I really just need to keep those out for Tweety Bits and Tweety Yarn or stuffing or felting and all the lovely ideas that you guys shared with me because it it doesn't make for a very nice yarn when you leave them in. Which I knew. I just I just wanted to test it, I guess. <laughs> I was feeling testy. But um so I started knitting up the Chelsea Market hat. This is by Carol Pierre and I love the way that this yarn is knitting up. So this is a uh, textural hat pattern with a single cable that runs up it. So because this yarn is kind of variegated, you, you won't really see much of the texture, but I didn't want to knit anything plain. So the cable has barely just begun. Um, you won't really see it pop until I get to the next repeat, but I think overall this will be a nice hat. Um, I was hoping to finish it in time for Mother's Day because it's for my mother-in-law, but I don't think that's going to happen because of shipping. It takes like five days to get from here to there, but maybe it can just be a late Mother's Day gift. <laughs> but I'm very, very pleased um, with this hat, and I, I think it's turning out awesome. And this yarn is um, a lot softer than the domestic wool that I got with my wheel, but it's not as soft as commercial BFL that I've got. So. You know, it's, it's, you can wear it next to your skin, but it's not, oh. <laughs> but I'm, I'm actually really pleased with the quality of this wool, and that's a good thing because I still have three quarters of this fleece to go, and there's two more on their way, and I have the Jacob fleece. I'm pretty much going to be processing fleece this, this entire year. <laughs> uh, but it is a lot of fun and really rewarding, so... I've been enjoying that and so I talked to you guys last week um, for my check it out about the designer Josh Rikes and I found out that he has a podcast I haven't seen it yet um, and actually I don't even know what it's called bad podcaster <laughs> I know that he's the designer behind Geonitrix designs and that his name on Ravelry is sort of a knitter 
but um, I guess he's having a Mister a Mystic Spirals sock knit along for the month of May, which is awesome because I planned on knitting those, and I showed you guys the awesome color wheel yarn that I got from the festival, but sad days, guys. I went to wind it up, and my Swift broke. Now this is a Swift, oh, right here. This is a Swift that I made, so it's my own fault. Um, I just made this part where it connected too thin, and it snapped. But the unfortunate part is that it, w it snapped while I was winding the yarn, and the stuff tangled so bad that I lost half of the skein. Like, irreparable. I spent five or six hours saving what I could and it got out of control just because it got all tangled over this and itself and it was just a giant mess and it's pretty unfortunate. So I have a half a skein of my color wheel, the Adams colorway, well the Oops colorway, and it's not going to be enough to make the socks. So, I mean, this is gorgeous yarn, and I was, I was really upset that day. I was really, really sad. And, like, I left the knot, and I went to bed, and I came back the next day, like, hoping that, like, somehow it was salvageable, and it was not. It just was not. So, I probably have about 200 yards here. I can do something with it eventually. Make, maybe some ankle socks, but not Mystic Spiral Socks. So I either need to order some more self-striping or just buckle down and build my warping board and dye some self-striping, right? That's what I really need to do. Um, I need to go to Home Depot. <laughs> but uh, that was my unfortunate event this week. So <sighs> moving on to finished objects. So I, like I said, I've been doing a lot of spinning. So I had this um, braid that Lindsay picked up for me at Stitches South. It is, well, it was four ounces of merino bamboo silk, 50, 25, 25. And this is from Gail's Art in the Stony Colorway. And this stuff is gorgeous and soft and shiny. Well, I spent on my Ashford Traveler, and the bobbins only hold about two ounces. So this is two ounces. And here, is two ounces finished. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> How gorgeous and luxurious is this fiber? I, I mean, I'm absolutely in love with Gail's art, you know, and I, I've been playing with dyeing my own fiber, and I'm like, you know, I'll never have to buy commercial fiber again, but I don't have to at this point. I just want to. I want to, okay? <laughs> This stuff is absolutely gorgeous. So for my two ounces, I got about 216 yards of a fingering weight. I have no idea what I want to do with this, but I feel like it would make an awesome shawl. Um, so bouncy. I don't think it's going to focus. But uh, the colors are gorgeous, and I chain plied them, so I got the nice long color repeats. And this was just an awesome project to be outside spinning in the sun. So I'm very pleased. Um, I'm really excited to spin up the other two ounces. But of course, as soon as this came off the wheel, Blossoms, Rolags went right on, and now I'm finishing up, you know, the Rolags I showed you, excuse me, the Rolags I showed you earlier. So I do have like a lot of spinning lined up, but I don't think I'm gonna run out of fiber or spinning. I still have the other two ounces of Malabrigo's Noob to spin as well, so. Um, that's coming along nicely and uh, so moving on to check it out so this week for check it out um, I know other podcasters have talked about this and I hate to be a giant repeater but I'm in love and I just have to express that so have you guys seen the teaser for the frosted pumpkin stitcheries mystery Halloween town club have you seen it? <laughs> I've already purchased it. You know me. Anything Halloween, I don't care that it's May. I don't even care. 
don't even care. I will stitch Halloween year-round. I don't know if you know, but most of my fiber stash is nothing but Halloween prints. Because I can't, I can't control myself. I can't, I basically can't go into any fabric store anytime near Halloween because I will just buy all the things! <laughs> so, um, I saw it earlier this week and it's already up for pre-order. The stitch along runs from, let me check, June 19th to September 18th. So it doesn't start for a little while, probably at least a month and a half. But it gives you plenty of time to um, pre-order and think about what linen or Ada you're going to put it on. And she's also they're also partnering with, um, I don't remember the name of the Etsy store, but you can buy supplies for that pattern from them with a discounted coupon, I think, after you buy the pattern. I'm not 100% on that, but I'm sure it's on their website, and I'll link to that in the show notes. But uh, there's just like the tiniest sliver of a little sneak peek of the design, and it looks like it's going to be like a scene of Halloween. A lot of their um, designs are like boxed off. And they're like monthly stitch alongs for the month, or like they're somehow some sort of a frame of squares with a design in each square. Uh, like you've you've probably, if you're familiar with the Frosted Pumpkin Stitcher, you've probably seen the other Halloween sampler. I'm going to be buying that one too, but I can't buy more than I can stitch. I'm already really slow at cross stitch, and uh, I have a tendency to pick it up and put it down throughout the year. So. Uh, I can't jump ahead of myself, but uh, I'm hoping with the stitch along that I can pace myself as the clues come out. Hopefully, we'll see. So, <laughs> um, I'm really excited for that. So, current events. I just have the April and May finished objects thread going on in the Ravelry group. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested. You basically just share what you've been crafting on for the last two months just has to be finished in the last two months and you'll get one entry into three different categories. Um, I don't like to beat a dead horse so just come on over to the group and check it out. Um, I think the group's just called Mando Bug Crafts. Super simple. You can find us and come and chat and say hi. I'm generally okay about chatting in there. It depends on if I can get on Ravelry at work or not. <laughs> um, and then for upcoming events, so I'm not sure that I can really say this or not, but um, there may be a spin along in the works with me and Lindsay of the Knit Whim Diaries. We've been ch talking about it and chatting about it. We don't have anything finalized yet. But uh, we will probably be doing one. Um, we're not sure when and uh, we're not sure how strict it's going to be or even if it's going to be competitive between the two of us. She doesn't have a Ravelry group yet, but I think she'll be making one once we start the spin along. So um, you could be thinking about some fiber or saving some fiber to the side, but I just wanted to give you guys a head up. Uh, uh, heads up. <laughs> But uh, other than that, that's all I got for you guys. Um, because it's been so nice out, I haven't been crafting as much. I've been spending a lot of time outside with my pets. And like today we did a whole bunch of weeding and replaced all the mulch in our front yard. And we plan to go fishing a lot now. And we took our dogs to the dog park. It's just we just want to be outside and enjoy the weather while we can. So if my episodes start being really short... Um, well, no, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say that they may start being shorter because I'm, I still plan on recording every week, but I might not have the content. And I'm not going to sit here and talk at you guys for 20 minutes about nothing that if I, unless I have something to say. Um, I just don't want to try to fill time and waste your time. Um, so that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys have a good week. I hope you are enjoying your weather as much as I'm enjoying my weather. I hope that you were crafting something awesome while you watch this episode. And hey, feel free to come share it in the Mando Bug Crafts Ravelry group. I'd love to see what you're working on. And yeah, see you later. Bye!